you have probably seen much of the American press, uh, uh, which, which has tended in many ways to be uh, quite negative. Uh, I, I think now of a New Yorker, uh, uh, which had a blistering attack on the RSS. Uh, inaccurate. I wrote a letter, in fact, about all the inaccuracies that came out in it, but it reflected a lot of the prejudices that one sees, like it's monolithic, uh, it's fascist, um, it wants a dictatorship, it wants to kick Muslims out. It's, the biggest problem is a lack of knowledge about the RSS. And that's where people like you have a role to play uh, in both answering you know, some of this criticism, writing letters to the editor, uh, speaking out. In fact, I, someone asked in the question I saw in the chat box, what is ma one of the major weaknesses of the RSS? And I'd say one major weakness of it and some of its affiliated organizations, some more than others, is the lack of response to attacks on it. Um, and there's certainly that. I'll give you here another example. I gave a talk at, in London at a university there, and I can tell you that some of the Indian faculty you know, totally negative, totally negative about it. And that is also true in, in much of the Indian Americans of, um, in the social sciences. Uh, one is they don't know, to be quite frank. They really don't know. And, and therefore, they should, they should really read our book. Uh, and hopefully, you know, it'll, it'll be better informed about that. But this, this lack of knowledge is really quite incredible. Uh, and the RSS itself and it, people who you know, who work with it, uh, I think have a, more of an obligation to speak out, like you. Dominic, do you have one something to add to that? Yeah, uh, I will request uh, Dr. Anderson to write an article and it should be published in the Washington Times or New York Daily, Daily News or New York Daily Post. And I agree. Another thing, there is a some kind of the uh, I I I don't I don't want to use the word mafia, but there's some kind of the close niche society in the especially humanity side, and they would like to allow you if you write something uh, critical of Indian against the Indian icon. Give an example, like uh, somebody if you write uh, rather than Raising Sardar Patel as if India's Bispar. If you write Sardar Patel and say, oh, he sent the army and killed 50,000 Muslims, then you get a job in the university. That is the thing. The second thing is about that most of the time, my, my criticism, strong, blunt and strong criticism is that American media and American academic they are the godfather of Indian leftists. So these are things, so write, even if you write article, even if you give the response, the media won't publish at all. Or electronic media won't invite you at all. Look at that thing, give an example, in Corona time. Corona time, the rich country, highly technical advanced country, medical facility country, like USA collapse within the two months. And the death rate goes above 90,000. Now they're talking about 150,000 who will go. Look at that. India is a four times more population than USA. India has a lack of uh, technical amenities and hospitals and services. Third, third important thing, Indian people are not educated and not disciplined as so called. In spite of that, Indian uh, the number of deaths and Indian number of uh, Corona people, they are a lot less. But no American media or no electronic media pay attention. They brought South Korea. They talk about, about today about the uh, uh, Greek, but they don't pay attention. So the million dollar question is how to tame these people in the media and electronic industry. So only thing that can be worked out with the sense the Indians in USA, they are around 4 million people and they are 
uh, uh, very educated people like 87, 82 percent people are postgraduate and uh, 87 people own the houses. Indian capacity in the USA is 150 billion dollar account. So in this thing, if we come to be, if Indian come together and do the pray, use that uh, their potential during the uh, 2020 election, we can do the change just like it did in the UK election. So these are things. Once the change of the just like a Modi too, lot of things change in India. Same thing in the 2020 election. Lot of things can be changed. This is my opinion. Yeah, can I can I add to that just a second? If, you know, the Indian community here and in other places don't realize the uh, potential power that they have, and in some places, not only power of numbers, but you know, as you say, they they are wealthy. In fact, they are the wealthiest ethnic group in the United States, um, and they have a real potential voice, but they haven't used it yet. I think they're still feeling to find out, you know, in what ways they can use it, and there's a certain hesitance about it. And I think they need to get over that. You know, they have a message. They have, you know, what they want. For example, what you brought up, Domley, about, you know, the various SEVA activities. More should be spread about that because it's, it's very favorable and it gives a favorable, you know, view of the party power, what it's doing. You know, it's helping people and without, you know, notions of caste or religion. I mean, they're helping Muslims, they're helping Christians, they're helping everybody. As, and that's true in this country. One of the great strengths of the HSS, I think, in, co in cooperation with the SEVA, is what it's done. During hurricanes, it's sent doctors to areas and it has skilled people who can do that. It's done that in India. For example, a friend of mine, now deceased, Stephen Cohen, said that he did a research on the Andhra a hurricane uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, about the only group of people who are willing to go up and pick, dead, pick up the dead bodies, both every, of everybody, Muslims, Christians, Hindu, whoever, were members of the RSS who were organized to go and work. And, you know, and that created quite a lot of goodwill on their behalf. More of that needs to be focused on and emphasized, and your organization is in a good position to do that. 